the Australian Association of Bush Regenerators 2024 National Forum was hosted by our Victorian branch. Exploring the R's of ecological restoration. Restoring biodiversity through resilience, regeneration, reintroduction and reconnecting to country. Our next speakers, Gillian West, will introduce us to cultural protocols and if you'll allow me to reintroduce Uncle Shane, um, our Bunurong elder and cultural protector, protection officer. Gillian is a proud Bunurong woman from Point Nepean and Palawa from the islands of Bass Strait. For 13 years, Gillian has supported Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander in work, education and their life's journey. Gillian wants to see her people succeed in employment and education so the world can see just how amazing they are and how living in two worlds can be achieved. If you'd like to join us. Woman Jenka. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians, the Wurundjeri, Wurrung people. Thank you, Arnie, for your amazing speech. And I don't think I want to come up after you, but I'll try. Um, my name is Gillian West. Uh, thank you for having us. This is Uncle Shane Clark, one of our Bunurong elders. So today is about learning, um, which is always a learning journey for non-Indigenous people from our people. I'm going to talk a little bit about cultural protocols. Um, what I do every day is in the legacy of my father. So my father, Japananga, Errol West, uh, was born in Launceston, Tasmania. He was put on a mission called Cape Barren in uh, the islands of Tasmania. He did not finish primary school and he was in a segregated school. So a 10 year old boy, he was pulled out of school. He then became a teacher, a master's in teaching, a senior university lecturer and a doctor of indigenous philosophy. My dad passed away 24 years ago at 53 years of age leaving seven children behind, and I'm one of those children teaching his legacy. He worked within Victoria for 20 years. He wanted culture embedded in education from foundation levels. He said, Gillian, always teach with respect. You don't know where people have come from, and Australia was robbed of the true history of Australia. So every day I walk with my dad, and he walks with me from the dreaming in the dream time, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cultural protocols and then we're going to actually listen to my dad's voice. So I'm going to set the scene for you today after Arnie did that, but I want you to think about the loss that we have had every day when you were walking on this country and looking after our country like we always did traditionally. So when we talk about cultural protocols, we talk about overusing Aboriginal people, organisations. Next slide, please. So just consultation with community. Please make sure all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, we have our own defined set of communication and consultation protocols. These protocols always dictate how, when and who to engage with with community. Community can advise on appropriate topics, written resources, guest speakers or contact people. Consultation ensures that the information is acceptable to the local community so it's to local community. Meeting allows community to have a sense of um, control on how resources are used and it increases consultation, involvement and understanding is an encouraged way forward. So if you're going to engage with a, a traditional or rap, traditional owner group, how do you know who they are? Does anyone know how, how to find? So if you're on Bunurong country or Andrew country, how do you find out exactly where you are, if you don't know. Does anyone know? I know a people, few people have done my training here. There's something called ACRIS, which you may all know about or may not. So if you just go into ACRIS, type in the area, the address that you're on, it will tell you whose area you're on. So we have to make sure we engage with the appropriate and the traditional owners of that area. It's really important. Next, please. So considering community, take care not to overuse Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander resources and contact people. Be sure to acknowledge the contribution Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have. Allow time for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to digest, consider and respond to requests. 
Explain your request clearly and realistically and make sure that the events or meetings are held at a convenient or suitable venue. Now, there's a few sli another slide that gives you all the resources and I'll send this in a booklet so that you've got these resources. So we have to make sure that we go to our resources before consulting with community. Um, it's really important that you, what you do every day, that you consider our people in everything that you do. You know, you look after trees and bushes and allow for fresh growth. That's what we did traditionally. I live, or we all live, in a Western world and a cultural world, and we have to navigate those two worlds every single day. When my dad passed away, within two days, a kookaburra visited all of his seven children. So the kookaburra is my dad's spirit animal. So if anyone sees a kookaburra after today, please let me know because he does visit people after, after I talk. So I don't know if you've heard um, there's no Tasmanian Aboriginals. That's a rumour that's gone around for a very long time because of the Black War in Tasmania. Even though I was born in Bunurong Country in Victoria, my dad's patrilineal lines, the Palawa, the Kana line. So this is my father. They said he stood six foot six in his boots and the only people that could stop him talking was the pointing of a finger of an old aunt. Everywhere he went, he would teach. We talk about the R's. He was about reconciliation. To teach non-Indigenous people who we are, where we come from, and where we want to go. Listening and sharing is the key to being with our people, in my view. So we're just going to listen to his voice. There's a couple of minutes. I got this conference. So my dad's been gone for 23 years, 24 this year. I went and did a welcome to country at Bunjil Place in Narry Warren. And the lady at the council said, Gillian, is your dad Errol West? And I said, yes. And this was about a year ago. Because I've been learning things without my patrilineal sign who are, side who are our, our knowledge holders. Our grandfathers are our teachers. And I've been learning it since my grandfather and, grand, and dad have been gone. And I'm like, is he teaching me from the dreaming or the dream time? I know he is. And the lady said, I heard your dad talk the other week on the radio. I'm like, not possible. She said, Gillian, I heard him talking during World Philosophy Week, International Fel World Philosophy Week. So I got, got the radio station, I wrote to the radio station and I got a copy of my dad talking for half an hour, 10 months before he passed away. And in this recording, he's saying things that I have been saying nearly word to word. So we're going to listen to his voice and then I'll hand it over to Uncle. I, I can't speak for any other Indigenous person here, nor should I, nor would I even vaguely suggest that I do. What I know, I know because of my ancestors, my elders, and many elders around this country. I'm lucky. I'm a Palawa man, a Tasmanian. You see, we're not all dead. If I am, you're in deep horrors. <laughs> so I'm a figment of your best political imagination. Deal with that. I've had to. Do you know how easy it is to stand up and say, I'm a Tasmanian Aborigine? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at my children. What's missing? Land. Colour. Language. Ceremony. You cannot box me in like that. I refuse to allow you. Society is the you I'm talking about. And you choose where you stand in society. But you hear me, everyone around this circle. We are poorer without each other than we are richer with our own kind. What is missing? Colour, language, culture, ceremonies. I can teach our history all day and how to work with our people. But if I had a mariner shell bracelet from our Tasmanian islands, our traditional jewellery making and an Apple Watch, I could teach you how to use that Apple Watch, but I cannot teach you how to make that mariner shell. And that is the biggest loss I have as an Aboriginal woman is that loss of culture. I will learn my two languages. I will learn how to make that. But if you take into consideration the losses that we've had, and we are strong but we're stronger with you by our side and understanding us and walking and working with us. Thank you all so much.
So Uncle Shane's just going to talk about what he does in his role. Thank you. Um, nah, thanks for our oil run, Rundry. Mandy, to, uh, to welcome us to your country, as we always do. We always acknowledge the lands that we are on and pay our respects to your elders and the old people that's, that's come before us. Uh, you can't help but feeling something from that speech. Is that right? Um, you know, stand beside Gillian. Strong, proud, Aboriginal woman. And uh, as we have always walked as proud Aboriginal people, you can hear the journey that she's been on, where we are today, where her journey has taken her. But uh, uh, just about myself, um, Shane Clagger, my role is protect, cultural protection manager of the Bunner and Land Council. Uh, is Renee Sweetman here today? No. Nah. But I just want to acknowledge Shadi and their team down the back. A strong part of our our team at Bunurong that for the work that they do on country and you will come across Shani if you don't know already and the team and the work that they do. We've got a we've got a long journey that uh but just having you know, Mandy sort of spoke on a lot about our cultural obligations to country. Jill speaks on it. Uncle Errol, who speaks on country and responsibilities and our, our rights that we have been denied our culture has been taken away. Our culture hasn't been, our culture's not, it hasn't died. It's just gone to sleep and we just will wake it back up. There's a part of them words in that puzzle up there, reconnecting, reintroduction. You know, this is about revo revising everything that Uncle Errol spoke about, Jill, Honey, Mandy. Uh, in my role, um, you know, we out on country, same as our neighbours of the way around, welcome smoking ceremony, you know, dance. Uh, oh. And that's showing that our culture's still here. You know, in my role also, we have to deal with our, our old people's Ancestral remains. It's about bringing them back, putting them back to rest. That have been taken. I had a lot to, I wanted to say, but then I sort of got lost in the sister girl here, and and it's about <laughs> that's really important. You know, you got to stop and. Look at what's around you through your mind sight. Close your eyes and listen. You know, when we talk about a tree, that tree, that roots that go into that ground, that connection. You know, in three cultural areas, there's, uh, there's always roadblocks where our obligation is to protect cultural heritage and preserve. Just an instance um, up in Yorta Yorta country, there was a scar tree. And that's another point that you made about consultation. That's a really important part. You know, you've got major roads and whatever the develop is. They'll go through the planning process. Then I will engage with the, with the reps or the TOs 
just to do the cultural heritage management plan. Be involved at the start in the discussions about them plans. Because up in Yorta Yorta country there was a scar tree and the and the and the major roads engaged with Yorta Yorta and said, Listen, this is our alignment and this is our project and this is where we're gonna put our road. Uh, go out and do your do your stuff. They said, Well you can't put it in that line because there's a scar tree. Oh well, that's all right, well uh we'll uh, remove that scar tree from that place and we'll put it somewhere else at our cost. But they missed the point. What the significance of that tree means to that place is a connection too. But they went back and forth, a lot of heated discussions and uh, the outcome of that was they had to put a roundabout and the tree stayed. Because you take that tree away from the place, it's taken away from the cultural connection to the place and the significance of it. But we've got a lot of people in the room today and it's about caring for country. You know, we always say it. Our country's sick and needs healing. Our wildlife, our vegetation, our waterways. Well, we're in a place now that we have been, we have been speaking for a long time about wants and needs and their rights. They've heard us before but now that now that now they're starting to listen and engage in careful country. You know and, and it's about care for country and what we all talk about healing. That's the journey that we've been on for a very long time. You understand the anger of Aboriginal people because of the because of the dispossession, not from our land, only from our lands, from our cultural practices of our song lines that have been handed down for tens of thousands of generations. The song land never changed because it wasn't written, it was handed down through language. The protocols was followed from generation to generation. How old is Australia since colonisation? Four generations, five generations? And that stopped our cultural protocols and practices where we had to change. But we're grateful today that we have our non-Indigenous brothers walking beside us, brothers and sisters, on that journey of healing country. I'm fortunate to also be involved with the Beerarung Council, with our neighbours, Uncle Dave Wandon, Honey Dye Care, Uncle Andrew Gardner, and members of the Randry and the Spout the Yarra River Strategy and the work that needs to happen there. And that's only one part of it. So when you engage, when you engage with the traditional owners, there's a part that's missing is consent. Make sure you have the right consent when you engage with these people who was going to speak on behalf of all their, all their groups. And when you go back to the planning, it's about engage with the, with the right people within that decision making. Because when, when they do their planning and they make their decisions, they make the decisions that engage us. How about making decisions with us not for us. But a uh, but bit of my background is a proud Bunurong man, but also gave me ties and connections on that Murray River system was Yori Yori, who come work India. 
takes me further up in the Swanee or Wamba Wamba. Waddy Waddy. Also have connections up to the Matatunga Rombale, the Lachi Lachi. Then across over to New South Wales, I have connections around Lake Mungo. There's a Muddy Muddy Neary. Down my mother's side takes me further up in the New South Wales is Oxley and Rundry, uh, Rundry country. Then through my great grandmother on my mother's side again, it's also bring me back down in the Murray River system. And it's taking me back up into Deneliquin. There's Aboriginal settlement up there in Munakulla. And that's my Brap Brap connection. So we're multi clan. And that's a bit of my black ground. Yeah. I'm, I knew you'd like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it something. But um, no, we just uh, just wanted to explain, yeah, you know, the roles that we have, and uh, our obligations for what we do today is we do what we do because of the ones that's come before us. And what we do today is got to make it better for tomorrow because we've been around and seen the old fellas who got that fire in the belly, the trailblazers. You know, and they fought for our rights and just understand our journey because it's a long journey. Aboriginal people never stop journeying. When I go home tonight, I'll stop. But when I get up tomorrow, my journey starts again. Couldn't we'll continue. But thanks, guys, and uh, just acknowledge the lands that we're on again. And thanks, Mandy, for having that warm welcome. And Aunty Jill, <laughs> she's going to say one more thing because she's deadly. And, uh, Please go wild for Aunty Jill, eh? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, Dad always said, time is not of the essence, it is the essence. So with time with our people, we run on black fella time, so we're trying not to. But he said two axioms I just want to share you and leave you with. It's not your right to understand, but it is your obligation to accept difference. It's not your right to understand, but it is your obligation to accept difference or newness. And philosophy is the pursuit of wisdom. And for those of you who are barefooted and touching the ground are at the core of philosophy. Take your shoes and socks off and touch our country as much as you can. 80,000 years of footprints from our elders and ancestors you're walking on. And usually I wear no shoes. That's why I nearly fell before. Um, but thank you all so much. And Arnie, again, thank you. I've always wanted to watch you talk. So thank you so much, everyone, and all the people that are here today doing what you're doing. It's amazing. Have a great day. Ready? Massive thanks to our forum sponsors. City of Yarra, DNA Training, Arbor Green, Merry Creek Management Committee, Ecological Consultants Association, Victoria, Stantec Australia, Global Green Environmental, NRM Jobs, and Nature Links. Arbor promotes the study and practice of ecological restoration and fosters and encourages effective management of Australia's natural areas by qualified people based on sound ecological principles. Join us to help promote good work practices, to strengthen our industry and network with like-minded people. Thanks for visiting Regen TV. Call by again soon for more restoration content you can trust.